Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today on the healing bench, I have a Striker Smart Pump. And this guy here was shipped into me. If you guys didn't know, I get stuff shipped to me a uh, couple times a week. You know, various people send me stuff to check out and take a look at. And this one just arrived. I have no idea what's going on with it. So it's a Striker Smart Pump tourniquet. It's a pneumatic tourniquet system. When I power this unit up, it says code 38. That's the only thing I know about it, and that's because I just powered it up. Let's go ahead and do that right now so you can see what happens. You'll have to excuse the alarms because it's going to alarm almost immediately. I see right off the bat that I have AC. I don't have battery, and that's before I power it up. Okay. And immediately it goes into code 38. So here's the other thing you should know. When I pull the power cord on this pneumatic tourniquet, it shuts off immediately. Shouldn't do that, okay? It's a pneumatic tourniquet, which means if it were to do that, it would release the air, and if it releases the air, then somebody would bleed out. It has an internal battery. So immediately, I can see that it doesn't have a battery when it's in charging on standby. It shows code 38, and a code 38 means that it's a battery or charging circuit. It's pretty safe to say it's something going on with the battery now mind you that this guy its battery life expectancy should probably be three years since it is a tourniquet let me go ahead and throw the power cord over there there's some perimeter screws around the outside and then two at the bottom so let's go ahead and zip these off real quick So that should be all my screws. Here, let's go ahead and pull those screws out. Yes, I'm using a magnet to pull out my screws. And luckily these screws are magnetic because a lot of stainless steel fasteners are not. Okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. Okay, so right off the bat, let's take a look. Um, okay, well I see some darkening on some of the cables. And usually when I see darkening on the cables like that, it means fluid or something got inside. Ah, there's a DC power supply. I can see that. And, ooh. Wait a minute. Who's been into this? What? Guys, there's supposed to be a battery right here. Where's the battery? Of course it's going to throw errors and not let you use it. Because as I already explained, the stupid device... It needs a battery to maintain itself so that you can release pressure or gain pressure. These are the bladders right here. You can see air filter. Uh, your valve body assemblies down here. These uh, bladders. You can test them if you want, but they almost never fail. Look at the size of the seam. These things are awesome. On quick connects. Um, what else could I say? Yeah, these are these are outgoing pressure filters to the tourniquet. These are your in, in ports right here. But wow, who took off the battery? Okay, so let's, let's zip that guy open. Let's take a look. All right. Okay. Well, you can clearly see the imprint from where the other battery was. Somebody took it off and never bothered reconnecting it. Why would they do that? All right. Well, I don't even see the where the battery uh, would plug in. Right here, I've got a fuse for um, 
7 amp. Okay. Well, since they took the battery out, I'm thinking that there might be something else majorly wrong with it. But I will never know until I get another battery for it. So, we got to start somewhere, right? Now, if I remember correctly, battery plugged in here. I don't see any signs of a uh, possible fire or anything, you know, caused by a battery charge circuit. It looks pretty clean, but here's your voltage regulator. Uh, no idea. Let's go ahead and check that fuse right here and let's see how that fuse is going. Okay. For that, I'm going to stick my multimeter on continuity. Let's check it out. Okay. All right. Well, guys, um, this is going to be a shorter video than I anticipated because, to be honest, it looks like it's all fine. I've got another fuse over here. This is where the voltage comes in. So this here is a breakout board voltage, and I think that's where your battery plugs in. And then this over here is your DC input to the, the breakout board. And there's another fuse right here. Okay, so that fuse is good as well. Ah, guys, this is so curious. I don't know who would have uh, took that off. But anyway, just goes to show you, you never know what's going to come across your bench. I don't see any other signs of damages. Somebody just took the battery out and didn't replace it. And now that somebody else took over the repair and said, whoop, it's got a critical error. They shipped it out, and in this turn, they shipped it to me. <laughs> and of course, it's not going to run. Um, there are a couple other parts where we can measure, like right here, it's really well labeled. They got a 3.3 volt, which is normally your processor power and also your ground. So there's some real good test points on this guy. I just, I don't know why. Yeah, right here is VBAT and ground. I have no idea why this stupid thing. Would have its battery removed other than somebody was just you know a little forgetful there you go guys it's a pneumatic tourniquet um i wish i could simulate it but i don't know the pinout for the battery in other words i'd plug something else in and show you guys what it can do it's a really cool device pneumatic tourniquet is exactly as it sounds it uses air to inflate bladders that cut off blood circulation to appendages they use them not only for trauma and triage, but they also use tourniquets for uh, surgery. So if they're doing surgery and they don't want the patient to suffer from very much blood loss, which you always want to try and minimize blood loss, use a pneumatic tourniquet. So if you're doing orthopedics or something, you know, yeah, you always have a tourniquet in standby on the room, ready to rock and roll. But proper battery replacement is part of your PM program, and it's just, I don't know. For me, it's kind of crazy seeing that this guy doesn't even have one in it. But uh, there you go, guys. It needs a battery. Simple as that. Um, I have full faith because I do not smell any power supply smell, <laughs> which your nose is going to be one of your best tools when it comes to troubleshooting things. I do not smell anything wrong with the power supply. I mean, as soon as I pulled that cover off, I would have gotten a whiff if there was something that was getting a little too warm. But... It apparently it's just fine so let's go ahead and button this guy back up I'll get a battery on order and see if I can get this repaired for him <laughs> sorry guys it's a simple little video but you never know what you're gonna get and in this case it is what it is it needs a battery thanks for watching guys